Now to the second in our series on the work of one of the region's air ambulances. Anglia 1 in Norfolk and Suffolk and its partner helicopter, Anglia 2 in Bedfordshire and Cambridgeshire, cover more than 5,000 square miles of mostly rural land. Both are run as charities, need at least £3 million a year to keep them in the air. Kate Prout spent a day with Anglia 1 to find out how it's spent. Sorry about this. Go ahead. We've got a job, mate. We've got Simon on the phone. Will we have a job? OK. The crew of Anglia 1 are scrambled to a remote part of Norfolk to reports of a man with a suspected broken back. Pilot Neil Waller has 25 years of experience and navigates livestock and electric fences to land in a paddock. Paramedic Neil Flowers and volunteer doctor Pam Crispin are on the scene within minutes where the patient's family watch anxiously. The lad was laying beside him and when I spoke to him he was still conscious and basically said that uh, he just slipped on the ground. And how is it having the air ambulance arrive? Oh, fantastic. I said the ambulance got there first obviously but uh, with having the air ambulance as well it just makes it that much better. If he has to rush off, air ambulance is the best way to go. The patient is stabilised and taken by land ambulance to Kingsland Hospital while the crew return home. And we will be routing back to Norwich Airport, over. Anglia 1 is a BK117 with a top speed of 172 miles per hour and a maximum flight time of two hours. So on a full tank, it could reach any part of our region and back without the need to refuel. The helicopter's role is now less about transporting patients and more about getting a doctor on site as quickly as possible. But full-time doctors on board will cost. The governance for that and the actual salary bill for that is likely to be somewhere in the region of 650,000 a year. So that would bring us up to about 4.1 million, 4.2 million, something of that sort of order. And on top of that, we currently only fly during daylight hours at the moment, but we're looking at extending that into nighttime activity as well at some point in the future. And again, that's likely to cost us a considerable sum of money. A lot of fundraising is done by the charity itself and former patients. Alison Locke was thrown by her horse at her remote farmhouse near Halesworth in Suffolk. Her son Edmund had been lifted just months earlier following a rugby accident. We just feel it's a really worthwhile cause and living so rurally, it doesn't matter what you do, whether it's horses, um, driving, bicycling, you don't know what, what's round the corner and it's just a very, very vital service. And so the doors close on another challenging day for the crew of Anglia One. Tomorrow, who knows who may need their help? Kate Brout, Anglia News. Well, Kate joins us now. First of all, Kate, what was it like spending a day with the helicopter? It was quite an extraordinary experience, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, perhaps as impressive as the crew is the actual helicopter itself. It's one of only three that they use in the UK, the other being Anglia 2, which covers Cambridgeshire and Bedfordshire, the other down in Cornwall, although they're actually used throughout the world as air ambulances. And they're incredibly powerful and fast machines. And our pilot for the day actually was a guy called Neil Waller, who's ex-army. He, he's flown helicopters in, for 22 years in Bosnia, Kosovo and Iraq. Back. and there's pretty much nowhere that he can't land that helicopter. Perhaps the most impressive being the Orwell Bridge in Ipswich and he has got the photos to prove it and did show me them and they are impressive. Amazing stuff isn't it and they are amazing and clearly uh, very much needed but just looking at your report what was clear there as well was there always seems to be ambulances, ambulances on the scene as well at the same time. Can you justify the expense of them? Can they continue to justify the expense of them at this stage? When they get about four call outs a day on average more in the tourism season and, and yes obviously the, the land ambulances and the fast response units get there a lot quicker, they're a lot nearer. But instead of being just a taxi to a hospital, uh, although that's great if you've got a head injury you want to go to Addenbrooke's, what's more important is that they have doctors on board who can do things that paramedics can't, like give an anaesthetics. And it's that golden hour after an accident when those doctors really can save lives. They are needed, aren't they, Kate? Thank you very much indeed for that. Right, uh, let's take a look at the time. It is just coming up. The father of a man from Essex whose body was found in a cement mixer eight years ago is claiming victory in his battle to have his son's death investigated as a crime. Lee Balkwell's death has been treated as an accident up to now, but his father Les believes he was murdered. Lorna Ramsey has the latest on Les's campaign. There are only two men in the Justice for Lee Balkwell campaign, his father Les and retired solicitor Tony Bennett. 
but they're determined to expose what they believe is a violent gangland-style murder. For years, Essex police maintained his death was a tragic accident. But now Les and Tony say they've seen documents which state that Essex police believe Lee's death does not appear to be an accident. Tony Bennett and myself uh, feel that um, we've been chipping away at a brick wall and a major, we've chipped a big lamp out of that wall at the moment. This CCTV footage shows Lee at the wheel of the lorry on a farm track in Upminster. Hours later, he was found dead. It appeared he'd been crushed in the cement mixer's mechanism. Essex police say they continue to keep an open mind over the cause of Lee's death. They added that a number of complaints against Essex police officers have been received and they're being investigated by the IPCC. Since Lee's death in July 2002, his case has been looked into again and again. For five weeks, Essex police investigated his death and concluded it was a tragic accident. At his inquest six years later, a verdict of unlawful killing by gross negligence was recorded. In the months that followed, the IPCC decided to launch an investigation and it was announced the West Midlands Police Force would also look into the case separately. In May this year, that force presented their findings to Essex Police and in July, it was announced that the Kent and Essex Serious Organised Crime Directorate will look into the case again. Les is looking forward to getting the findings of these reports. He hopes it will finally give him some answers over the circumstances of his son's death. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Upminster. Climate scientists at the University of East Anglia in Norwich say they'll soon be providing better access to their data. The university's climatic research unit has been the subject of three independent reviews into the so-called Climate Gate scandal. They found the scientists did not manipulate data, but they were told to provide better access to their research. They've now had new investment. It's proving a busy summer for the Walton and Frinton lifeboat, which has been launched four times in just 48 hours. It rescued two disabled yachts and a helicopter winchman who was stranded at sea. The lifeboat was then called out again to rescue two people in trouble on board a yacht in four six winds. Its ninth launch is this month. Now, after a 10-year wait...